Hey guys, it's the Gonzi Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, to please click on the button below to hit subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you all of our content. Today I'm going to be doing another Oculus Quest video. In this video, I'm going to be focusing on bringing in a new asset that I downloaded from the asset store and it was created by Cinti Studios. This company has amazing assets and I really recommend you check them out because they have beautiful low poly assets. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be downloading their asset and trying to incorporate their asset into the Oculus Quest. We're also going to be using some of the controllers that I added in the previous videos and then going into Unity and then show you what those controllers are. So let me jump into Unity and I start working on it. Hey guys, how's it going? So let me show you what we're going to be doing in this video, which is to use the Synthi Studios Polygon Nature Pack asset to basically run it in the Oculus Quest. So one of the things that I had to do is I'm using the one of the scenes that I created before in a previous video. If you follow me on the previous videos, I've been doing multiple scenes for each video that I do. So the previous one that I did was on VR movement. So make sure you watch the previous videos on Oculus Quest development. I also did one on where I had VR movement with controller, which I just barely posted today. So it's gonna be on the same day that I post this video. And I also have one with nature, which is the one that I'm gonna be showing you right now. I also have one that is VR stationary, and that's the one that I'm basically not moving around. I'm just looking through the camera rig and then basically looking in at the environment. So what I'm gonna show you today is, first I wanna recommend the Synthi Studios asset because it not only looks amazing, it actually performs really well. I am really happy at how the Oculus Quest experience feels when you're doing it. Also, the asset is honestly is beautiful, so you can see that by looking at some of these images. The video that I'm gonna show you today, it's gonna have some of the baking settings for lighting. I'm gonna basically lower them because I don't. it's gonna take a long time if I wanna bake it at the highest resolution light. Last time it took about 40 minutes. So I'm gonna lower some of those settings and I'll show you some of those settings as well. So just, you know, just download this asset. I really recommend it. Once you download it and purchase it, you can, you're basically gonna have this folder, which is the one that I have. So what I ended up doing is I went into my scenes. I cloned the VR movement scene that I already had and I basically renamed it. So it's now called VR movement with nature and it's basically the same scene. All it has is just basically this asset. So what I did is I went into the polygon nature and I'm gonna show you exactly what I did. Then I went into scenes and they have two different scenes in here. So I went into the first one. If we double click on that one, I can show you what that one has. And it's gonna basically take a minute here to load because there's a lot of assets. So this is one that they have. I actually, what I, the one that I actually copied was the second one, now that, now that I think about. So what I did is basically copy every single one of these assets and I paste them under the content prefab, the content game object that I have in my scene. So basically just copy everything that you have here. And of course you don't want to copy another main camera. So make sure you don't copy the camera and actually don't copy the directional light. So everything except the directional light and also the main camera because we already have that in our scene. So I went in and copy those and then move them over to a new scene, which is now called VR Movement with Nature. If you look under content, this is everything that I copy over. I didn't have to resize anything. I just copy everything as it is. And everything happened to be sized perfectly to, to match what my OVR player controller is. So if you look at my OVR player controller, it basically is sized perfectly to the scale of the environment. So that's basically where, where I start with the player controller. And then I have everything else under content. I realized that I had the directional light added. So I ended up removing because I had two of them. And the other thing that I did is I added, I also added an audio manager. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you this by just starting the scene. So if I start the scene, I might get an error because of the OVR components, or maybe not. No, it looks like everything worked. So you can hear the music. And if I go in, you can see that everything, there's just a lot of life in this level. There's a lot of shadows. There's a lot of things from the tree falling down. So it's just, honestly, it's just a beautiful 
scene. So I'm just going to basically just go around and show you how this looks like. And also keep in mind that the scene has been baked with very low resolution. So this actually looks a lot better. It just happened to be the resolution that I pick. But even with this, it looks it still looks beautiful. You see the water. So let me just hit play so that I can keep showing you. So that's basically what I have in here. I have an audio manager. And the audio clip, I downloaded it from the YouTube audio library. So all of these audio library, it's basically free audio, so you can you know you can download it. So I ended up just basically going to youtube.com, audio library, music, and then searching searching for environment. And then I basically just play multiple of them. And the one that basically fit, fit, fit pretty well was the one that's called edit and then download it. And then this basically has a loop on it and it's also playing on awake. So that's when that's because when I hit play, you can listen to it and it also loops through the loops through the track. So the other thing that I noticed is that it was taking a long time to render and, and also to bake all the lighting in this scene because some of my default setting, settings were pretty high. So what I did is I went into window and then rendering and I also went into lighting settings. And you know, you can play with these settings. I, I ended up using Enlighten as the light mapper. I also lowered the indirect resolution so that when it's set to two, the light map resolution was actually pretty high. It was like 256, so I lowered it down to six. And then I also I also changed some of the settings on the light map parameters. I changed it to be default very low resolution. But like I said, for debugging purposes, I think this works great because it was actually able to render this in about a minute versus you know waiting like 30 to 40 minutes, depending on some of the settings that you might cho might choose. So. For now, just for debugging purposes, I, I chose the Enlighten. But if you need to do you know these in real life, you probably want to bake it with you know the right settings, have that bake, and then when you bake it and you wait your time, it's, you're gonna have all the lighting with high resolution, which is probably gonna make your your game. It probably will make the game look a lot better. But for like I said, for debugging purposes, that's just perfect. So that's honestly everything that I that I have. So. Just to give you an overview again, I have a controller. This is the OVR player controller that I added on the previous scene. I also have an OVR camera rig, which is part of the OVR player controller prefab. And then of course this prefab has all the different components that Oculus provides. Right now I don't have hands or I don't have a controller because I haven't added it. I think for this video, it's just, you know, I want to show you how some of these Unity scenes look like. So if you want to purchase one of these, scenes and you know from the asset store which i use quite a bit then you know you're more than welcome to do that and it doesn't mean that you need to use all the assets you can use just few assets if you like to or you can use the entire scene because i mean it looks it looks beautiful and then the other thing that i have is i have a light which is basically the light that i had on the previous scene and then i have all the content that i brought in from the previous from the nature the polygon nature folder so make sure that you do that. And then the other thing that I did as well is I build it and I can show you, I could go in here and then hit build settings and then, you know, select the new scene, of course, because that's the one that we clone and I add it as an open scene and make sure that you, you, you set the texture compression to ASTC. Also the TC2 fallback needs to be 32 bit. And then of course I have my device connected. So there's also a known issue with the new Oculus data integration. I'm going to do a video focus on that, but if you have any issues with the latest version of the Oculus, which is, let me show you what that is so that you, if you have any issues, you can solve as, as well. If you go and search for Oculus and you go into the asset store, of, of course, and right now the version that I have is, if we go into releases, the one that I have is 1.39, and I noticed when I downloaded this version, my controller stopped working. I couldn't see both, both of my controllers in my left hand and right hand. If I push one, it'll show the left one, but it wasn't showing the right one. So I found out by looking through the Oculus forums that you have to do this. You have to go to the Oculus option above, and then go to Tools. Then make sure that you click on Remove Android Manifest, because this is going to be the manifest that was built with the previous version of the Oculus asset. 
And once you do that, it'll remove it. And then after that, go back to that option again, and then click on Create Store Compatible Android Manifest. And that's actually fixed it. It fixed everything for me. And I can now run through the scene where before it was basically doing like a weird snapping. So make sure that you do that and it's actually going to make things work for you. So now what I want to show you is how this scene looks like when I run it on a device. I actually took a video of how this looks like. So, and this is a video that I'm going to show you. So I can show you that I'm running the scene right now in the Oculus Quest and I'm basically waiting for it to get built. And let me just fast forward it a little bit so you can see. There we go. So this is the scene that I just showed you. It's running on the Oculus Quest. And I'm just going to play it just for a minute so you can see how everything looks like. Well, guys, I hope you enjoy this video, and this is honestly everything that I wanted to show you guys. Thank you. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time, and if you have any questions about what I just showed you, please let me know through the comments. Also, be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers. Also, make sure that you check out my Patreon page where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes. I also post early access to source code and everything that I do in GitHub in Patreon.com. So, Thank you very much, guys.